Hi friends, welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. So I'm going to jump straight in and show you the dried and resined results of this little piece. And just, oh, wow, it's so gorgeous. Even if I say so myself, it couldn't have come out any better. The way the enchantment there and the Athena and Twinkle were just working their magic. Just, oh, absolutely beautiful. And then with the coat of resin on them, just finishing them off gorgeous. So how did I get to this stage? So you know the pillow paint, you know the pouring medium, and you know the cell activator from the pictures at the beginning. I'm gonna run through the colors that made this. So we've got a piggy piggy paint, piggy paint lineup going on here. And the first piggy we're putting down, it's this one, Enchantment. Enchantment is a semi-transparent, as you can see the little line through the square there. It's this beautiful, gorgeous lavender color that has a bit of a kind of bluey flash to it somehow. It's ever so pretty and it's very difficult for the camera to pick it up, but Enchantment is going down first. Now, time to place your bets, my friends. Those that know me well know they have a one in three chance of guessing which piggy's going to go next. And it's Twinkle, this little piggy. Uh, Twinkle there, it's an interference piggy. Uh, interference blue uh, and uh, kind of violet. Violet one way and then blue the other. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. And for those that don't know what an interference pigment is or an interference paint, is it's gonna be a paint or pigment that's generally going to be transparent or semi-transparent. And it will look white in color when you mix it up and when you use it in the pour, but it will flash the uh, color that it has to it. And this one, like I said, is the blue and the violet. Uh, and when you look at the piece at a 45 degree angle, you'll be able to see the color that's underneath this, but this will add added depth and dimension with like a blue magenta flash, which is absolutely beautiful. Oh, there we go. Kind of, you can see the two there a little bit. Anyway, that's Twinkle it's going down next. And then on top of Twinkle, the paints we're going to use are the tube paints or my favorite right now, Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents. This is the gold mine, as you can see right there. And, and this is most definitely uh, an opaque paint. Uh, and this is going down next. So the next piggy we have is this one. This one's called Athena. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's semi-transparent, as you can see there, but a little line through the square. And is this beautiful, dusty, rose, pink, gold flash color. Like she's just glorious, absolutely. One of the new piggies that have just been released. And she is going down next on top of a gold mine. Then the last paint we're putting down, my friends, it's this one. This is Liquitex, uh, Quinacridone uh, Crimson, as you can see there. And it is a transparent paint. So this is going down last just for something for a cell activator to sit on and hold up on. And the cell activator today is going to be made from Yes, the Rust-Oleum Gold Mine. I use the Shelley Art recipe uh, and uh, this with Australian Floetrol makes a fantastic cell activator. Okay then my friends, that's enough of me getting dry mouth and tongue tied. I'm gonna zip it. We're gonna get the camera pointing down and we're gonna start painting. Okay then friends, the first thing I should say is this is going to be a diptych, which means two canvases and these are two six inch square wooden cradles. And the first color we're putting down here, it's the TLP Enchantment. Gorgeous, gorgeous lavender color with a beautiful kind of blue flash to it as such. And this with the twinkle are gonna make a lovely background for our vine. As I just said, there's the twinkle going down we love Twinkle ever so much. One of the first piggies I actually ever bought and one of my first loves. Uh, I have no problem admitting that. <laughs> as you can see, my paints are just a little on the thick side, but as we know, we can use that to our advantage sometimes. So the color we're putting down now, this is the Rust-Oleum, the gold mine. Very, very highly pigmented gold and has a gorgeous shimmer to it. And it's just gonna break up the lineup of the pigments. So we have some actual paint and tube paints in between the pigments holding them up 
so we hopefully get a better effect. And now this is the town of Athena, or Athena, all depending on where you're from and how you want to pronounce it, but the beautiful new TLP pigment, the dusty rose with a beautiful gold flash to it. Absolutely spectacular new pigment and uh, quickly becoming one of my new favorites. And now we're gonna put down the uh, quinacridone, quinacridone crimson. And as you can see again, it's just a little on the thick side. As we know, consistency is key, but there is a small window of workability <laughs> of slightly thick and slightly thinner. But that's the quinacridone crimson going down. So that's our piggy piggy paint, piggy paint lineup done. And I'm going to show you now that we are going to swipe with the Rostolian gold mine as a cell activator. Now I use the Shelly Art recipe. If you'd like to know what Shelly Art is, please look at the details in the description or go to the website on the bottom of the screen right now. I have a 15% off code for her online course and it's something that I highly, highly recommend. Okay, now we're going to blow the vine out here. Just trying to get the gold to blow nicely over the other colors. Give us some pretty cells and hopefully some nice composition too. So just on a couple of these little petals, let's call them, I do blow them out just a little far so the colors actually do bleed out and blend into the white background. I do this on purpose in some places just because I love to give the piece some variety and uh, different, different shapes to modify when we get to the actual modification stage. So just blowing out the last few little petals and little pieces, just getting it to a nice kind of pleasing state before we start doing the modification. And there you go, you see, just blowing the petals out just a little further to get them to fade out into the white background is a very pretty effect too that you can use with this bloom vine technique. Now, I'm not actually sure who ever created the bloom vine technique, uh, but um, one of the first people I ever saw do it was uh, dear friend Lisa Marvin. I highly recommend you check out her work. She is quite amazing such an inspiration and uh, the person I believe we should give the credit to for this but all we can hope for really my friends is to be emulating someone it's all been done before as you can imagine we can only do it with our own unique take and style so just blowing the last little bits of the leaves out here and we're going in for some modifications so I like doing a nice mix of little drag ins on some of the leaves and then drags out on the other leaves. And when we're also modifying this, we want to be very careful just to drag the colors over the white pillow paint. If we drag too fast or too deeply, you have a chance of bringing up some of the white pillow paint in your actual colors and sometimes that's desired and a great effect and other times not so much. So in we go now guys for the last few modifications I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna drag this leaf out. And you see how when you drag the tip out there, it really does make a pleasing leaf shape and you get to have fun doing nice little swirls with the ends and the tendrils and things like that. I've got to say, I really am very pleased with the way that the enchantment and the twinkle have stayed just perfectly beautifully framing the uh, Athena and the gold and the red really beautifully and sending them off nicely. 
And I think I'd like to say that this is one of the best bloom vines I think I've done. But there you go, friends, you see, just pull out the leaves occasionally and you get these really glorious, beautiful effects. So I did consider putting this part of the video in double speed just to kind of get through it quickly. But again, as with when I spin my pieces, I'm going to leave everything in real time so you can see really closely what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, guys. I like giving a good close up of the piece when I'm doing the modifications so you can see exactly how I'm doing it and not at a double rush speed. So anyway, in we go for the first spin. Again, in real time, you can see how fast I'm spinning for. Now, when we're doing diptychs like this and you're actually dealing with a rectangle, a shape of a canvas, you have a central fugal force dictating that the paint on either end will move further and quicker than the paint in the middle there, as you can see. Ah, nice close up, gorgeous. So this is why my two pieces are an angle across my board. So there was just a little more of the board on the top of the spinner to catch the paint that will come off at the ends. And another close up, oh wow. Wow. I know I say it every time, but I couldn't be more happier. I really couldn't. So this is it, my friends. There we go for a look at the sheen, the twinkle and the enchantment working in the background, just framing the red vines so beautifully. So thank you very much, my friends. Please like, subscribe and share. And of course, as always, happy pouring.